Do you have a hard time making a choice? Are too many options keeping you up at night? Is your inability to make a decision ruining your life? Then this is the build for you. It's the Plinko of fate. Don't let decision fatigue keep you from living your life. Let regular fatigue do that. Hello and welcome to BB Builds. I'm Alex Diaz, AKA Barbie Boy, and this is the show where I talk about how I build something that nobody asked for. All of it, totally unnecessary. Today we're talking Plinko of fate. It's super simple. Insert the ball, ask your question, pull the lever, and let fate give you an answer. You can either use the diamonds here for yes or no and A and B type questions, or insert your own potential answers in the nifty little card holder at the bottom. Two quick notes. One is that I did not plan this one out at all. I had like maybe one sketch, like maybe one really very loose sketch. And this leads me to number two, which is as a rule, because I didn't plan anything out, I did not allow myself to buy any materials for this project. This entire thing is made out of anything that was lying around from previous projects. I just thought if I'm not going to do the responsible thing and plan this out, then I can't go wasting a bunch of money and resources. So without further ado, let's start talking about the main board here. This is the main board. If you built nothing else but this, it will work. I got really lucky and I found a 1 8 inch piece of plywood that I had glued one inch square dowel all the way around as a frame. I don't remember what I was going to use it for, but all I had to do was tap one of the top pieces off and I had the perfect base to work off of. From there, I took the board and I gridded the whole thing out so I could figure out exactly where to place the dowels, dividers, and bumpers. Originally, I had thought I was going to use a penny, so my grid squares were one and a half by one and a half inches. The next step I took was to install all the dowels. Having not planned this out, I did not consider quite how many dowels I would need for this project. 85. It took 85. So that's 85 dowels I had to saw out, 85 times I had to drill, and 85 dowels to glue and hammer into the board. After the dowels were installed, I cut nine dividers from some scrap and installed them at the bottom. After that, the final step for the board was cutting out the bumpers. This was super easy. I just took square one inch dowel and cut triangles out of it using a miter saw and box. Unfortunately, this was also the end of my miter box. And with that, the main board was done and I could have honestly stopped there. It totally functioned as a Planko board. But there are two reasons I decided to keep going. One is that I was a little bit worried it wasn't random enough. If a person can choose where they drop the ball, they might be able to figure out that a certain area tends to favor a particular pocket. And number two is that it was too easy and I wouldn't have learned anything. That's when I decided to add the lever. I had no experience whatsoever creating a mechanism. I've never done it before. But what I did have lying around were these springs. This, I've just learned, is called a compression spring. This is the type of spring that will push. When I saw this, it reminded me of a pinball machine and the lever you use to release the pinball into action. So then I just started trying to imagine how that worked. I thought you take the spring, and then you take a rod that is thinner than the spring and put it through the center. And then you attach some sort of stopper to that rod that's wider than the spring is. So when you pull the rod, that stopper catches on the spring and pulls it back, compressing it. And then when you release the rod, the spring pushes the stopper and something like a pinball that's in front of that stopper will be propelled forward. So having figured out the idea for the mechanism, I decided I was going to install it on the side of the board. But I also realized I'm going to need a track to guide the ball from the lever to the board. For this, I carved in an arch from a piece of scrap wood that was long enough so that it extended past the right side of the main board where the mechanism was so it could catch the ball and guide it back to the main board. With that came without a doubt the hardest part of this build, which was creating the actual mechanism and housing it. I honestly don't remember how I did this part. It was just a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of trial and error. What I ended up with was a piece of wood that was like a capital F that I had turned 180 degrees. I drilled holes through the arms of the F and this is where the rod slips in. Between those arms is also where the spring lives, and then there were two one-inch wood blocks, one between the arms and one on the top of the rod. Both wood blocks are attached to the rod once it's through the F in the spring. The block between the F arms acts as the stopper that catches the spring when it's pulled, and the top block is what pushes the ball up through the tracks. Once I had the lever built, I connected it to the arch with a one-eighth piece of plywood. With that, I just had to attach it to the main board. With the main board and the lever finally attached, I now needed a stand that could prop it up and lean it back so the balls wouldn't fall off of it. For anyone out there that takes pride in the craft of woodworking, I'm sorry for what you're about to see. 
But I want to remind you that at the beginning of this, I said I would not purchase any materials for this. And at this point in the process, I had totally run out of any sizable pieces of wood. So when it came to the stand, I had to turn to Frankenstein. To do this, I tipped the plinko board back at an angle I thought would work and took the best piece of wood I had left and placed them side by side. I then traced out the back and bottom of the plinko board from the wood and cut it out. I then duplicated that piece and attached both together with another piece of wood. From there on, I just started adding random pieces of wood to fill in the empty space between the stand and the board until I had a completed form. I also created a little holding case for the balls so when I wasn't using them, I wouldn't lose them. Then I used some wood filler and filled in all the gaps between the pieces. From there, I primed everything, connected the plinko board to the stand, used a ton more wood filler as well as some smaller pieces of wood for more extreme gaps, sanded everything down, applied another coat of primer, and with that it was ready for some painting and design. Choosing from the paint I had lying around, I chose yellow, pink, black, and white as the palette because it was one I had never worked with before. For the lettering and design, I was going for sort of a Zoltar, boardwalk fortune teller vibe, so I included some occult symbols with flourishes and stars to break up the negative space. This is when I decided to install the card holder by gluing thin layers of balsa wood over each other at the base. So at this point, I was so close to being done, but I ran into one last problem. As I was painting the lever pieces, I realized that the paint was warping them, specifically the wooden dowel I was using as a rod. Luckily, I had a piece of aluminum that was the same diameter as the wooden dowel, so I swapped the two. But that led to another problem. When I put the rod in, it was so much more powerful than the wooden dowel had been that it ended up cracking that wooden stopper. Then I came up with this other incredibly convoluted idea. I had square aluminum tubing lying around, so I cut a block out of it and drilled a hole wide enough for the aluminum rod but it was too wide to properly fit in the lever housing. So what I needed to do was end up cutting the back of it off so that it would be thin enough to fit in. But in doing so, I knew it was going to eventually bend inwards in the back because there was no more support there. So I very luckily had one more piece of cylindrical aluminum tubing that was just wide enough that the aluminum rod could fit through it. So I ended up being able to cut this piece to fit inside the piece of square aluminum tubing in a way that would support it from the center. Then I connected both pieces of aluminum tubing to the rod with a bolt. And that's how this aluminum stopper came to be. After that, I fashioned this handle for the lever from a random wood block I had lying around. And then just using the remains of two half-emptied spray bottles of clear coat, sealed the whole thing and uh, there you have it. Plinko of fate. Let's do a test. I'm gonna do a yes or no question. Black diamond yes, white diamond no. Plinko of fate, you gotta ask it like this. Plinko of fate. Should I have spent so much time building the Plinko of Fate?